Well, hello again from Kingston. You can probably tell by my dress that there's been a significant improvement in the weather this week. And that has allowed work to proceed at a very much quicker pace. If you want to know all about it, please follow through the video, stay till the end for wildlife, and if you don't already do so, please consider subscribing. As the title suggested, we're going to examine this week one day at a time. And Monday dawned on the West End with snow removal. Surely an encouraging sign of the spring ahead. Signs of life on and around the west abutment indicated, as it would turn out to be, a special week there. Finished with snow removal, the excavator moved to the area of the laydown where the ready mix trucks wash out and leave waste concrete. It all has to go as part of the preparations for fresh deliveries. All of this activity occurring on the west end with a light rainfall. Over on the east end, the dedicated crew from Linkline Fence Limited continued the work of trimming the top of the fence that runs along the south side of Gore Road. A sharp pencil is absolutely critical for measuring and marking. Any skilled worker will tell you. Staying on the east end, Tuesday provided what may have been the week's highlight when the pumper from Maple Concrete arrived to pour the east abutment. Preparations included deploying the stabiliser arms that ensure it's safe to operate the pumper and its arm. It takes a very skilled operator, but before long, the sleeping giant awakes. It's also important to install and check the various fittings that enable delivery. With everything set up and ready, it wasn't long before the first ready mix trucks from CBM arrived ready to discharge their cargoes. Before the pour proper begins, a substance called grout is pumped through the system to prepare it. Then it's off to the races with eight or nine trucks ensuring a steady flow over several hours. The strength and quality of the concrete when cured is very dependent on a continuous pour. After some hours it's time to lower and stow the pumper arm, withdraw the stabilizers, and for the last ready mix trucks to depart. But the work of the operator is not over until he has thoroughly washed and rinsed the pumper and made his way home to Mississauga. And all this time, Linkline have been busy trimming the south side of the fence. And across the bridge, work continues on the west abutment while discussions occur over an expansion joint and evidence continues to grow that something's going to happen. Wednesday began, but this time on the east end, as Monday had, with snow removal. Then, beside the 1200 crane,
trucks from Linkline and Black and McDonald were seen to approach. Their passage drew attention to activity on and around the crane. Within the hour, she had emerged from hibernation, lifted her boom and was ready for work. Up on Gore Road, it quickly became clear that Black and McDonald had come to lift and install the traffic light signal poles delivered last week. They quickly moved up to the intersection with Highway 15, checked level and equipment on the bases involved, then, taking full advantage of the mechanical assistance available, they proceeded to place the poles. In every case, cables have to be drawn through, the position and orientation of the pole confirmed, and then it's lowered into place. It was a long day for the crew, and every installation ended with the pole being firmly locked into place. The amazing effort finally came to an end just before dusk. Before we close the chapter on Wednesday, let's have a quick look at the situation on the west abutment. We'll begin by looking at those new traffic light signal poles. There are 15 of them. While we're airborne, let's have a look at that new fence on Gore Road. Work on the fence continued on Thursday with the placement of the panels that conceal the fence posts. After careful measuring, each piece is cut to length. The process must be repeated many times. There are more than 70 poles and another whole section of fence will be completed when the abutment is ready. Another encouraging sign of spring this week was the fact that the boats were launched. Though there's still a significant amount of ice on the river. With the east abutment poured and the LR1200 back online, attention clearly turned to installing brackets on span 20. An early approach to the west abutment on Friday morning revealed that a test fit of the first expansion joint was taking place. Removed and relaxed temporarily while adjustments were made. The joint was soon back, heading into place. This was the first of three pieces that will link the west abutment to span one. Keener eyed amongst you may have noticed earlier a truckload of reinforcing rod past the abutment. It was delivering the latest shipment in order to take forward the extraordinary effort being made to lay rod in preparation for the deck to have concrete poured and the LTR 1100 crawler crane was brought forward to unload it. On Thursday, we'd seen work to install brackets on the north side of span 20. On Friday, the work was taking place on the south side. It's a little ironic that at the other end of the bridge, Every effort is being made to remove the brackets and temporary structures. Much of the work is performed from the bridge buggies, which means that occasionally they have to be raised and repositioned.
Sometimes, when clearances are being checked, you can fall back on time-tested human solutions. And the voice of considerable experience should always be listened to. A lot of work has been done this week, but one thing is clear, there's still a great deal to do. The comfort is that the conditions will be more pleasant in which to do it. And with that happy thought, let's go to wildlife. So there you have it, another week closer to completion and before you know it, it'll be the end of the year and you'll be driving this beautiful bridge. Thanks for watching, see you next week.